All right. Um, so we're just looking for about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, you guys know some memorable stories about the war. Um, can I get what you guys, um, what your guys' position was? Um, what branch of the service you guys were in? We were both in the Army. And I was in the Army Infantry and uh, Military Police. Right. Um, so I hear one of you guys has a story about um, a grenade in a foxhole. Can yeah. you elaborate well, on that for us? We were moved in, into a position late one evening to fill a gap between two people. It <coughs> started out there were just two of us and they won, we were clear on the end, they won three in the foxhole. So one fellow that just came back from the hospital, he was standing there digging in. He got a piece of shrapnel on his face while he was digging in, so he left. They sent another one in. Replacement. Then that night things got pretty hectic. I I wasn't on guard, I was asleep. Felt something go by my shoulder and I knew a grenade had come in. So it exploded. Uh, the other two guys were injured. Uh, one of them went immediately over into a neighboring foxhole, and then the other fellow had been my foxhole buddy for quite a while. I got him around and got him laid out. And then. Uh, and they'd given a walkie-talkie to the other group, and they told me what to do, how to cut the boot off, tie a belt around his leg, one of his foot was folded back up around the, his ankle. The other was a big gash, and I don't know just how much it was damaged, but got the boots off, and I put the belt on his leg to use the tourniquet. And then I told him, you're going to have to have some morphine. We didn't have any. They uh, said they couldn't come, couldn't bring any. And I told them, well, he says, I was coming after some. They couldn't bring it, so I said they'd bring it. So they came down and gave him some morphine, and I put a poncho over him, and then it started raining. It raining for about two weeks. Then I went. Went back to the hospital the next day, and I was fortunate out in the hospital there while rain was going on. But that was just one of the close calls I've had. <laughs> How did that affect you during the war? How did that what? Affect you? Oh, the whole thing. <laughs> you think there's no effect, but there's some effect. Yeah, there's a closeness. Of get between soldiers who have been through combat that it stays with you for a while. And uh, I don't know, you're always a camaraderie there that you don't have with some other people. And um, do you have it? I'm uh, four years younger than him, so I was uh, back when he's getting shot at back home and it's pretty hard on the home people too. Knowing your brother is being shot at and affects the whole family. Uh, he got home one day out of the service and uh, I enlisted the next day. And uh, I went down to Fort Knox and took about four, about five weeks of basic training. Then they started closing the camp down. It was artillery basic training, so I wasn't carrying the M1 around as carbine, which was a lot lighter, and uh, and went home um, just before Christmas on a seven day and leave and went out to California and shipped over um, on the U.S. 
General Weigel. And we went the northern route, and it was really rough. The seas were really rough. So I trooped off to Japan, and then I went to a uh, replacement depot. This was in January. Um, old Japanese barracks and the windows was out. We didn't know anything about burning their coal or anything. It was the poorest coal we ever saw. Them. And uh, I swore when I was little I'd never wear long underwear. After <laughs> next morning, the first thing I did was empty the duffel bag out and get my long underwear out to put on. And then I got uh, called up for the yeah, Provost Marshall School, which was an old uh, Buddhist temple. I went there and become an MP. Then I went to Ashcombe City, which was 54th MP Company. It was a small company, somewhere around 100 men, 20, 120 or 100. Or 80, and uh, I told the fellow that you know the only time I ever got a shot at was uh, when some Seventh Division guards went out and got drunk on sake, and. Uh, we were to be over the guards and the Korean Gestapo there and check them all out, you know. And uh, just, we just no more than got on there and on guard, and we heard all this firing, you know. And my buddy he said uh, he'd go see what the trouble was. And I said, "Good, I'll go where the shoot." Uh, those Korean constabulary started running toward me. They're um, um, bong, um, bong. That's MP in Korean. And uh, he started shooting toward them. Fortunately, where I called into the police station was uphill. Fortunately, he was up in the Box car and it was he was shooting over the head of the Korean soldiers and he's shooting below me and uh, other than that I got on the ship and come back we took a southern route this time picked up Air Force personnel in Okinawa fueled up the other end of the ship, went through the Hawaiian Islands and didn't see an island. Back to where we shipped out from. And 